Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Swuss. Continuing on with college football week six, sticking in the Big Ten. Are you Rutgers on the road in Nebraska? This is one Rutgers in one of the biggest games of the weekend here. Let's go. Welcome to The Swiss. The Swiss. Hey, get the Swiss. All right, like I said, Scarlet Knights on the road in Lincoln. Uh, Nebraska laying a full touchdown here. There are a couple six and a halfs out there if you look. So six and a half to, uh, or seven, depending on your sports book. Total sitting at 40 and a half or 41, depending on your sports book. Let's take a look at the pie charts. And according to these numbers, um, action coming in on the Nebraska side, over 65% of the tickets, about 55% of the money on, uh, on Nebraska. Again, as I always say, take this data with a grain of salt. So let's get into this matchup. We'll start with some head-to-head -head history. Nebraska kind of owns Rutgers here. They've beaten them five in a row, but Scarlet Knights have covered. Three and two against the spread. Rutgers is against Nebraska in their last five matchups. But obviously, these this is a completely new Rutgers team and a completely new Nebraska team with Matt Rule. So this is pretty much irrelevant. Just thought it was interesting enough to include. So let's get into this matchup. Rutgers offense, obviously led by the rushing attack, 11th in the country in run frequency. This is an offense that wants to run the ball, and they've been pretty damn good at it. 42nd in yards per carry, 25th in rushing success rate, 14th in effective rush. Now, you might notice that their passing numbers look pretty good. 25th in yards per pass attempt, 19th in success rate per drop back. But look at the effective pass, 79th. And when you look at Cal, and I'll, I'll show you why it's that in a second. If you look at Cali McManus' numbers, you might be like, hey, he's playing pretty well. 761 yards on the season, 7.9 yards per attempt, seven touchdowns, one interception. Okay, so why are they 79th in effective pass? Well, because he did all of his damage against Howard and Akron. I mean, look at his last two games, just 192 passing yards per game, 7.8 yards per attempt. 46% success rate per dropback is actually pretty good. But the point is, once Rutgers saw a couple of power four defenses, I mean, they saw Virginia Tech, who doesn't even have the greatest defense, and then Washington, who doesn't even have the greatest defense. Once they saw a couple of legitimate programs, the passing numbers, Cali Igman has started to struggle. He did all of his damage against Howard and Akron in the first two weeks of the season. We know this is a Rutgers offense that needs to run the football to be successful. So will they be able to do it against Nebraska? It's tough to say. I mean, Nebraska's got great run defense numbers on paper sixth in yards per carry allowed 71st in success rate is a very good 24th in effective rush so some advanced metrics have them as a top 25 run defense the defense as a whole sitting at 23rd in dfei so pretty solid here um, one thing we did learn about the nebraska defense in the illinois game if their pass rush isn't able to get home their secondary is very beatable Luke Altmeyer showed us that 21 of 27, 215 yards, four touchdowns, 193.6 passer rating. Altmeyer had time to throw in that game and he picked Nebraska secondary apart. Now, a couple things to consider. One, Cali Manis is most definitely not Luke Altmeyer. I'm big on Altmeyer. I think he's a very good Big Ten quarterback, definitely underrated. I bet Illinois in this Nebraska game, bet them again against Penn State last week. So personally, I'm an Altmeyer fan. Cali Manis is most definitely not Altmeyer, but also, Rutgers offensive line is not on the level of Illinois' offensive line either. I was just referencing Nebraska's pass rush. This is a top 25 unit. I mean, 16th in pass rush grade, 29th in pressure rate. It's a very good pass rush. Not that Rutgers offensive line is bad. In fact, it's a pretty formidable Rutgers offensive line, but it's not Illinois. They're 54th in pass blocking grade, 71st in sack rate. They're 20th in pressure rate and 7th in hurry rate. So you might be like, hey, they've been doing a great job in pass protection. But I mean, against who? Howard? Akron, Virginia Tech's offense, if you stop that offense, that's impressive, but Virginia Tech's defense isn't anything special. Washington's, I mean, that's not a crazy defensive front. So Rutgers offensive line has performed well up to this point. This will be by far their toughest test in the Nebraska defensive front. So personally, I know Cali McManus has some decent looking numbers on the year. I think he's going to be in hell on this one. I think that Nebraska pass rush is going to win their battles and going to be all over them. I don't expect Rutgers to be able to throw the ball in this game. Now, what about running the football? Because like I said, this is what Rutgers wants to do, and they're good at it. 237.8 rushing yards per game, 5.43 yards per carry, almost a 50% success rate when they hand the ball off. That's very impressive. I definitely don't love the fact that Manungai struggled a little bit in his only road game. On the road, week three, Virginia Tech, 3.2 yards per carry. Other than that, he's been steamrolling everybody. But as a whole, we know this is a very dangerous Rutgers rushing attack. Um, so will they be able to run on Nebraska? 
I, I think so, a little bit. I mean, if you look at Nebraska's run defense numbers on the season, they look elite. 2.89 yards per carry uh, allowed so far. 87.4 rushing yards allowed per game so far. So it looks great. Surface level numbers, Nebraska has an elite run defense. But against who? I mean, if you go by their effective rush ratings, the strongest rushing attack that Nebraska's seen so far this year is Illinois, sitting at 51st. Illinois is a passing offense. And by the way, Illinois ran the ball a little bit in that game. They averaged 4.3 yards per carry. So, I mean, I mean, they haven't really seen any decent rushing attacks this season. And Illinois, who's not even a, a strong rushing attack, was able to run the ball on them. Rutgers is sitting at 14th in effective rush. So this is going to be the strongest rushing attack Nebraska's seen this year by a landslide. Unfortunately, though, like I said, I don't trust Cali McManus on the road in Lincoln here. So Rutgers offense is definitely going to be a little bit one dimensional in this game. I mentioned Illinois was able to run the ball on Nebraska. That's because Nebraska had to respect Altmaier. They don't really have to respect Cali McManus. So I, I think it's going to be a struggle for Rutgers offensively, even though on paper they should be able to run the ball in Nebraska. I don't think we can count on it. On the other side, we got the Nebraska offense, and they've been pretty balanced. To be honest, not really the offense I was expecting from Nebraska. They're 71st in run frequency, 64th in pass frequency. If you look at their metrics on the season, I was expecting Nebraska to really lean on their run game this year. They brought in a couple really big physical backs. They have a good offensive line so far. 76th in yards per carry, 81st in effective rush. In fact, the strongest part of Nebraska's offense has been Riola. 39th in yards per pass attempt, 20th in success rate, 34th in effective pass. They're sitting at 48th in OFEI. I wasn't expecting this. I was expecting Matt Rule to run the football and let Riola develop as a freshman. Unfortunately, the run game hasn't really been there like they expected it to be. So Riola's had to develop faster um, than they probably wanted him to. But the thing is, he looks really good. 1,221 yards, 8.5 yards per attempt, nine touchdowns, two interceptions. He's actually been great protecting the football. A plus turnover worthy play rate. I also really like how he seems to be improving as the season's progressing. In the first two games, Nebraska was only averaging 234 and a half passing yards per game, just over seven yards per attempt. Look at the last three games since then. 274 passing yards per game, almost 10 yards per attempt, 57.2% uh, passing uh, success rate per dropback. I'm sorry. So in the last three games, Riola really turning it on. And this Nebraska offense, didn't think we'd be saying it this year, maybe next year in his sophomore year, but I'm going to say it. This is, this is a pretty good passing attack here. So how does that match up against the Rutgers defense? Uh... Well, I mean, this Rutgers defense is, is a tough one to get a feel for. If you look at their numbers, this is an elite pass defense and a terrible run defense. And I guess that's a decent summary of how they look so far this year. I mean, they're 133rd in yards per carry on the season, 120th in success rate against the run. You got to remember, this is a Rutgers defense that lost its middle linebacker, defensive captain, leading tackler, like their main defensive piece. They lost them for the year right before the season started. So it's not crazy to think that Rutgers is terrible against the run. And that's what it's looked like so far. But I do kind of question the Rutgers pass defense numbers. I mean, they look great. 27th in yards per pass attempt, 15th in success rate, 19th in effective pass. But... In the first three games, they were allowing just 134 passing yards per game, 4.7 yards per attempt. They looked elite. They were looking like an elite pass rush. They shut down drones of Virginia Tech. Rutgers was looking like a top 10 pass defense. But then Washington did whatever they want. I mean, I can't believe Washington only scored 18 points in that game. There was a lot of penalties. A lot of things bounced Rutgers' way. I mean, look at the passing offense for Washington. 314 yards, 8.5 yards per attempt, over a 47% success rate per drop back. Washington ran the ball on Rutgers, too. So Rutgers' defense had no answers for Washington how are they going to stop Nebraska and Lincoln? I mean, this Rutgers defensive front doesn't look great. They're getting bullied off the line of scrimmage, 111th in line yards. They're not really generating a pass rush, 82nd in pressure rate, 121st in sack rate. Nebraska's offensive line has been pretty good. I mean, not elite, certainly better than Rutgers defensive front, though. Now, I know when we're talking about Nebraska's offense, everyone's going to point at that Illinois game. They only had 48, I think it was 48 yards rushing in the game, 1.5 yards per carry, something crazy like that. Couldn't run the ball at all on Illinois, but here's the thing. Rutgers' run defense looks really bad, and that defensive front is really struggling. There was some magic on Rutgers' side to win that Washington game. I watched the whole thing rooting for Rutgers. I think I think the very dust runs out here in Lincoln. So even though I'm not all in on this Nebraska team, Rutgers is really due to lay an egg, and I think Nebraska probably wins this comfortably. I cannot bet this. I'm in New Jersey. I'm not legally allowed to bet this game. 
There's six and a halfs open. I would grab them. I'd be on Nebraska minus six and a half if I was able to bet it. I think Nebraska wins by double digits, so I, I hope I'm wrong. I'll be rooting for Rutgers, but as far as a pick against the spread in this game, Nebraska minus six and a half. If you want to see all the bets I currently have open, head over to kylecrims.com and click on open bets. You'll, you'll see mine as well as everyone on the staff here. Also, if you sign up to Sauce Network Plus, it comes with access to the Discord and you can participate in the weekly betting league. $150 on one of these trophies go to the winner every single week. So if you're interested, head on over to the website and sign up. Let's have ourselves a good college football week. I need one, man. College football recently. I mean, this year, just I, I, every time I think I'm back on track, I, I lose some more. Really struggling to get a grasp of college football right now. NFL's been good, so <laughs> I'll take that. But hopefully things turn around in college football. Please remember to bet responsibly. Talk to you in the Discord.